According to National Geographic, Alexander the Great, also known as Alexander III or Alexander of Macedonia, is known as one of the greatest generals in all history. Alexander was born in 356 BC, and through his love of hedonism, Alexander was able to slaughter his way through the Mediterranean and Asia Minor, massing an empire that went from Greece all the way to India. As he conquered lands, he brought with him a cult so sadistic that it was known as the Cult of Souls. This cult is also believed to be the cult that started secret societies. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Because of the topics that we cover on this channel, this channel does suffer with shadow banning a lot. So if you could do me a really big favor and make sure you share this video with your friends and family that you think might be interested in this topic. I would also love to give a really big shout out and a huge, huge, huge thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. You guys are the original supporters of this channel. I love you all dearly. This channel would not be what it is without your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. And today on Mystery Monday, we're going to be talking about the cult of Dionysus and its mystery schools. Now, a while ago, we covered the Ulyssian Mystery Schools on this channel. The Ulyssian Mystery Schools are, of course, associated with the priests and priesthood of Isis. The Ulyssian Mystery Schools, from all that I could tell, were a very positive mystery school that really involved a lot of shadow work. There will be a link to that story, that deep dive down in the description box below. And of course, last Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa, we reviewed the Ulyssian mystery schools and going forward, we're gonna be looking at other mystery schools. Well, the cult of Dionysus is in exact opposition to the Ulyssian Mystery Schools. And this cult, from what I can tell in my research, is part of what brutally, brutally destroyed the Ulyssian Mystery Schools. Now, before we get into the story, I do want to acknowledge that with names such as Dionysus or Ulyssian, as we discussed on Aquarius Rising Africa, different accents around the world, different pronunciations around the world involving the way different cultures say vowels or consonants are going to create a different way to say each word. It's kind of like here in America, we say tomato, where over in Great Britain, they say tomato. It's the same thing, and it's valid in both cultures. So as we go into these stories, I do want to acknowledge that different people, depending on where they live in the world, are going to say these names differently. Neither is wrong and neither is right. It just has to do with the accent of the language in which the person speaks. And to be honest with you guys, we're probably all saying it wrong. You know, if we could travel back in time and go and experience these, these mystery schools at their originating point, we'd probably laugh at the way we say it compared to the way they said it. So with that being said, please no comments in the comment section about the way I say Dionysus compared to the way someone in Australia or Great Britain say Dionysus. It's really not necessary to make those comments. Again, it's just like the way I say tomato is different from the way someone in the UK would say tomato. It's the same thing 
culturally, the way I say Di Dionysus is the way we say it here in the United States. Now, Dionysus might sound very familiar to you guys because this is not a subject that's unfamiliar on Esoteric Atlanta. We have spoken about Dionysus before when we did our deep dive into Mardi Gras. Now, with this being said, with this cult of Dionysus, there are a lot of sinister practices involved. And I, I do want to acknowledge that. However, I want to remind you guys all again that the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. The only thing the darkness can do is take from the light and invert it. So I still stand my opinion. If you are someone who is from New Orleans and you practice Mardi Gras, that is a part of your festivities and you're not hurting anyone. You're just out there celebrating culturally with your friends and family. And in that celebration, there is laughter and there is love. In my opinion, there is absolutely no nothing wrong with that. And where there is laughter and where there is love, God, the real God, the God of light and creation is present. I want to really emphasize that because on this channel, we don't take dogmatic approaches to things. On this channel, we acknowledge that not everything is black and white. Most things live in a state of gray. And in my opinion, it often comes down to the intention of a person. If you have never hurt anybody in your life, if you've never intentionally gone out there to cause destruction in someone else's life, then your intention is pure and your heart is good. So with that being said, let's get into the cult of Dionysus. Many of you guys have heard me say many times that the name Jesus is basically means Hail Satan. This is where this comes from. And so hopefully this video will give you guys more of a bit of an insight as to why I try in on my channel to specifically use the name Yahshua. Because Jesus himself is thought to be Dionysus. Why is Jesus thought to be Dionysus? Well, Dionysus is the son of Zeus. Jesus literally translates to of Zeus. And Dionysus himself also represents Lucifer. And if you guys know, well, most of you do know who've been on this channel for a while, Christianity today ain't nothing but Satanism with a bow on it. <laughs> the, 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 the life of Jesus that we're taught in church is not the life of Yahshua. It's a totally different story. The life of Jesus represents Dionysus and Mithra. Mithraism, which I've covered that many times on this channel, those videos might have been taken down by YouTube. If they were, check my Rumble channel and you'll find them on Rumble. In Greek mythology, Dionysus is the god of wine, orchids, fruit, vegetation, fertility, festivity, theater, ritual madness and insanity, and religious ecstasy. He is also known as the Liberator because his energy brings a sense of freedom of self-consciousness to his followers. The Romans knew him as Bacchus. And this, my friends, is another area as to why Dionysus is the representation of Lucifer and Jesus. Because he is the, not Yahshua, let me rephrase that. I'm saying Jesus. He's not the representation of Yahshua, the real person. But the mythological Jesus, yes, this is Dionysus, which is also Lucifer. Lucifer, we know, is the light bearer. And Dionysus is known as the great liberator. Because you see, my friends, as the Ulyssian mystery schools basically went through the, the the purpose of being human, right? When we look at the Ulyssian mystery schools, they were literally forcing people to go within themselves to work on their own nature, to work on their own friction, something we've spoken about many times on this channel, something I do off, off of YouTube. I've spent many years in India studying this, but with the cult of Dionysus, it's the exact opposite. Basically within this cult, they were these like snotty, Node knows children that basically were like, I didn't ask to be human. I didn't ask to be here. So I'm going to basically say, screw you world. And I'm going to give into my carnal desires. I am going to give into my nature in order to escape my nature. And this is what they meant by the great liberator. Now, this all seems well and good. There are many things you can do to kind of give into your natures without hurting people. But of course, this cult hurt people, especially children and animals. Dionysus is known as Dionysus the transgender, 
Dionysus the Jesus and Dionysus the dying and rising God. Dionysus is considered to be twice born. So again, for those that were raised in a church, just listen to the similarities here. In the spirit world, Dionysus was the son of Zeus and Persephone. You guys know Persephone from the Ulyssian mystery. So this is when he was just in spirit form. But then something happened. Something happened, my friends, where Dionysus wanted to come to Earth to play with the humans. And this happened through the form of Zeus and a woman named Simile. Simile was a human being. It is said that Simile was a high priestess of Zeus. Zeus fell in love with Simile, and he would watch her do rituals and make blood sacrifices to him. Now, the blood sacrifices we're talking about in the priestesshood of Zeus were blood sacrifices of a bull. Now, if you guys remember back to our Mithra story, what is the thing that is sacrificed to save humanity from itself? The bull. The bloodshed of a bull is what saved humanity in the Mithra story. And here in this story, we have Semele, a high priestess of Zeus, sacrificing a bull to him. And being a little creep, Zeus, it said, would shapeshift into an eagle so he could be a freaking pervert and watch Semele bathe in the river. Zeus would then shapeshift into a human so that he could come down to Earth and start having a love affair with Simile. Simile would then become pregnant with Dionysus. Zeus's other lovers got jealous and shapeshifted into humans to befriend Simile. When Simile would gush and speak about her baby daddy Zeus, the shapeshifters would start to plant seeds of doubt into Simile's mind. Like, maybe you're crazy. That's not really Zeus. This is just some freak who's convinced you he's Zeus. And uh uh-oh, now you're pregnant with his baby. In her desperation and confusion, Simile ran off to Zeus, demanding that he reveal himself to her to convince her, to prove to her that he really was who he said he was. Zeus begged and pleaded with Simile not to do this because it was known that if the gods revealed themselves fully to the the humans, it would basically incinerate the humans. But Simile begged and begged and begged. And so Zeus was like, okay, you asked for it. And he revealed his full self to Simile where she incinerated right there on the spot. Zeus quickly picked up the fetus of Dionysus and sewed Dionysus into his thigh to continue to carry out the pregnancy. When Dionysus was born on earth, he was born as half god, half human, a Nephilim, if you will, a giant. And again, I'm going to reiterate this just because somebody is a giant or a Nephilim does not make them bad. It's the it's the actions of the person. It's the character of the being that makes it good or bad. So all y'all out there that are saying all Nephilim are bad, you ain't nothing but a bunch of bigots, my friends. That's just like saying someone's bad because of their race. Now, as we've said, Dionysus was considered to be a transgender, which is interesting. Some might say that this transgenderedness represented the fact that he started his incubation in his mother's womb and ended it in his father's thigh, the representation of both of both the masculine and feminine. But regardless, he was considered to be transgender. Of course, he was also considered to be a giant. We've seen this in a lot of the old sculptures of Dionysus that he definitely was a giant in the world of humans. Dionysus was also known to carry a specter that would be covered in ivy and honey. And although the specter could be used as a benevolent wand, it was mostly used as a weapon to destroy those who opposed his cult and his mystery school. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? I mean, the church has been the biggest censor, the biggest organization in the world to censor people has been the church. In the past, the church just censored people through death. Now they send death threats and they tell you not to read particular books. So 
you guys see where this is going? It's Mithraism and the cult of Dionysus is what the Christian church is. This also represents the Hollywood cult and the political cult and all, all that stuff too. Now, the followers of Dionysus were so obsessed with his story that their whole point was to try to become possessed by Dionysus so that they know not, not only could be considered half mortal, half God, but that they also could acquire his powers. Now, it is said that the cult of Dionysus is probably one of the oldest cults in the world. Take that all with a grain of salt. Again, we know that our history has been manipulated. We know that maybe some of our dates are not correct. But what we have as of now, this is what a lot of scholars tend to believe. A lot of scholars don't believe that this cult originated in Greece. Um, they believe that it started elsewhere in the world and then came to Greece and started to pick up some of the Dionysian story with it. From the website HellenicWorld.com, they say that the original rite of Dionysus is almost universally held to have been a wine cult. They follow the wine's life cycle, starting with the grape as embodying the living God and how the intoxication is really the possession of God's spirit. They used the horns of the bull as a wine glass and they used the goat to provide the wine skin. So we know, again, that the darkness cannot create anything. That The only thing that can create is the light. All the darkness can do is take from the light and invert it. So we see the grape, the wine, and I'm not saying wine is bad. I don't believe that alcohol is actually bad. And, and we're going to see, you know, when, it, when you talk about being possessed by a demon or having spirit possession, there is an actual ritual. You have to actually ask for that. So you can't just be walking down the street one day and boom, a spirit just jumps into your body. It doesn't work that way because our world works off of the laws of consent. So, and in order to be possessed by a demon, there is an actual ritual that has to be followed. We've spoken about this a lot with the grimoires. We did a huge, about a year ago, I did a huge deep dive into a lot of these old grimoires, these spell books like the Necronomicon. We looked at the uh, Lesser Keys of Solomon, the keys of solomon I'll, I'll place all of those books down in the description box below we looked at the missing spell books of moses where we saw more of the ritualistic aspect of taking on demon possession which is what they would do in the cult of dionysus which we will get to in a minute but back to this idea that the darkness can't create anything so first we have this idea of wine so they would watch the life cycle of the grape. The grape would grow on the vine and then through its kind of death and rebirth, it would then become wine that gave an intoxication. Now they do call alcohol spirits. And um, again, you can't be possessed by a spirit unless you ask to be possessed by a spirit. But like for me, for example, first of all, I don't have a problem with alcohol. I'm not an alcoholic. Safe to say I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not sober, but I don't, I only drink a few times a year. And whenever I do drink, I've never, ever in my 40 years on this planet, ever gotten violent or gotten angry with alcohol. In fact, when I drink, I usually get really happy and really loving. Let me tell you guys, I'm a fun, cheap date because it doesn't take a lot to get me tipsy because I don't drink that much because I exercise so much. So I am a fun, cheap date. But on the other hand, there are people who will drink to excess, who will not be able to stop. And when they get to a certain point of intoxication, there is a very ugly side that will come out of them. In my opinion, this is showing the true nature of the human. Now, for people who do get anger issues with intoxication, I'm not saying that they're bad people. I'm just saying that what this intoxication is doing is it's showing them where maybe there are some wounds that need to be looked at. But I, again, back to Dionysus, I thought that was really fascinating, right? That they would see this life force of a grape and through the process of that grape becoming wine through the, it would, it would like die and rebirth again into this very potent, um, very, very intoxicating liquid. Now, as I said, they use the, ho the horns of a bull 
and the skin of a goat to create the wine glass, the chalice for the darkness, as, as if you will, because we know the chalice for the light is the woman's wound, ba womb, basically, that carries on on life through the womb of the, the, the womb of a woman is a portal, right? That's the chalice for the good side, the bad side, it's a literal cup, you know, and, and with bulls and goats, a lot of times bulls and goats are associated with Satanism. This is where this comes from. Poor goats, poor bulls. Goats, first of all, are hysterical. I would freaking love to have a pet goat. I think they're the funniest animals on on the planet they are so funny and they are so cute and bulls i don't really want a pet bull but all of these animals were created by god they were created by the same creator who created you and me so by their nature these animals are not they're not evil they were just used for evil purposes and therefore became the mascot for evil now as i said many scholars believe that this cult did not originate in greece but originated elsewhere through wine cults and then as it got to greece that's when the story of dionysus got kind of intertwined with this original original cult and again take these dates with a grain of salt around 6000 bc wine either originated in the zargros mountains which is a mountain chain that borders mesopotamia and persia or the mountains of Libya and North Africa. I tend to think that it's probably a little bit of both, that they were probably, you know, it's kind of like that. What's that monkey, the hundred monkey um, study where monkeys can be on two totally different sides of the planet. And when a certain amount of monkeys start doing one thing on this side, it like collectively energetically moves and then monkeys over here start doing it on the other side. So there's like a collective consciousness here. And so around this time, I could understand in both areas of the world where they're growing grapes, they probably started to dis discover that if you do the life cycle of the grape, you can actually create a fermented drink that became wine. So again, it's probably a bit of both. This was around the year 6000 BC. And then as the wine got popular culturally around this area, they started to import and export wine. And with the importation of wine into Greece around 1600 BC is when this cult started to form. Now, again, this cult has also been known as the cult of souls and the originator of secret societies. And this is why when we look back at the other mystery school, the competing mystery school, the Ulyssian mystery schools, they were very open about everybody knew where the temple was. Everybody knew that that was a school. You had to apply to get in. It was all free will and consent. They would give you multiple times during the process of your initiation to leave if you wanted to. No one was getting hurt. It was just you drinking your peyote and going on your own journey with the priestess there to help you and babysit you in case something went wrong. But with the cult of Dionysus, this was, again, a secret cult. The Ulyssian mysteries were not secrets. They were very out in the open with what they were doing. They weren't trying to hide anything. The Dionysian cult, on the other hand, was absolutely trying to hide things. The Ulyssian mystery schools did not involve children. The Dionysian schools did. The Ulyssian mystery schools did not hurt other people. The Dionysian schools did. So initiation into the cult went as follows. The main practice was possession and atavism. Atavism is the conjuring up of old magic old ancient magics so they were literally trying to embody these older practices that were practiced by the phoenicians by all sorts of kind of questionable groups and this was in order for them to provoke something ancient some ancient god in order to start the possession process yes that's right the possession process the first step in the initiation was to become possessed by a spirit. They would, of course, drink to excess the wine, and then they would do particular dances and chant certain spells in order to summon the spirit's possession into their body. It is even said that this group during this part of the initiation 
wanted was trying to become a shape shifter now again shape shifting itself is not bad we know that magdalene herself according to the sophia code was able to shape shift into a lion in order to hunt demons and if you know anything about energy and consciousness our body is constantly in a form of shape shifting so this group would call on the possession of particular spirits that would give them the ability to shapeshift into more um sinister beings like the matador the matador is absolutely tied to the dionysian cult now interestingly enough uh, you guys know i see spirits i've seen the matador before and very freaky very scary the members of this cult again felt like they didn't choose to be here they had been tricked to come down to earth and be placed into human bodies. So once again, I will reiterate, the Ulyssian cults would use the friction of being human to help you find the wisdom within your own soul, which is the whole purpose of being human, according to Eastern philosophy. We come down into a mortal body in order to feel the pains and the suffering of that mortal body in order to create what we call an opposing force, where you have a soul that's immortal and a body that is is mortal with opposing forces you get what we call friction with friction that's where light can be created so according to the elysian mystery schools and all the positive of god mystery schools they're basically saying it's okay that you're human you came here to earth to be human and to fuck up as a human that's the whole point it's like resistance training you know you go to the gym and you you up your weights at the gym in order to create stronger muscles. Well, your soul came to earth in order to refine itself through the resistance of being human. So with the positive mystery schools, they're taking accountability for being human. They're taking that into account that they, that they picked this, their soul in its infinite knowledge decided to come to earth to experience earth school and to use the lessons of the mind and the body in order again to refine itself where the people in the cult of Dionysus were a bunch of fucking crybabies who needed a safe space because pouting as a crybaby would i didn't choose to be here so therefore mother nature god tricked me i'm the victim because i got tricked into coming into this body that's literally going from cradle to to grave what a bunch of fucking spoiled brats let me tell you and so because of that they basically wanted to give the middle finger to god and be like you know what you tricked me into coming into this crappy body so i'm going to use this crappy body to basically spit in your face the law of one again read the law of one Ulyssian mystery schools were definitely on the service to others path where they were helping serve others in the light you're good you're fine it's okay just keep working on yourself whereas the Dionysian mystery schools were 100% service to self the negative path now after the spirit possession was complete the cult members would then perform a sacrifice this sacrifice was either that of an innocent child or an animal now this is kind of gruesome so i will warn you they would do this by literally pulling the body apart so the blood would spill and then they would take the dead body and they would consume it sounds familiar doesn't it they felt like by consuming the body they were consuming the life force of this pure being to help accentuate and accelerate their own life force and that of the spirit that was possessing them after this was complete it would end in an orgy sometimes there would be um, another death that would occur in these orgies it definitely takes a psychopath to be able to do this shit let me tell you somebody who has a soul would never be able to do this shit now again this was a secret society kind of like the controllers of our world today they did this they would flaunt things in public like our controllers do but no one really knew what was going on for a very long time and as i said the most famous of these cult members was the psychopath and serial killer alexander the great 
he was so hedonistic and he was a huge member of this secret society. He participated in so many of these activities, these possessions, the, these murders, this cannibalism, all of that. Alexander the Great, that was who he was. That's what he did. And because of his conquering of a lot of the world during his 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 escapades he basically taught other people of elite power these secrets too now we know that when you give of yourself to a demonic possessed spirit you get material wealth and power back in return that's what they wanted that was the point was to be able to have again the dionysian powers of god of zeus within them even though they themselves were mortal this is exactly what our elites have done in our world today. They they do cer ceremonies. I mean, hello, eyes wide shut. They do ceremonies exactly like the Dionysian cult in order to accumulate worldly possessions and worldly powers. It always does come at a cost, though. But for these people, they don't care. As long as they're able to get off when they get off, that's fine with them. Now, what's super interesting is that at one point, this secret society got completely out of hand. And this was around 186 BC. The Roman Empire was so concerned about the activities of this secret society that they tried really hard to outlaw it. But because so many people in the Roman society and the neighboring empires were gaining so much power from this they were not able to i mean think about it this way it's taken a lot to try to take down this cult today because this is the i mean in my opinion this is the exact same cult we're dealing with today you know and it's taken a lot and we're still in that fight they're, they're not gone yet they're still doing this shit to try to gain more power and so that's understandable that they just were not able to take out this cult because of the massive amount of power it had accumulated and so my friends that is the story of the dionysian cult the cult of souls the originator of the secret societies once again i want to reiterate that as long as you aren't hurting anybody if you're in new orleans practicing mardi gras celebrating with your family if you're not hurting anybody it's okay everything comes down to your intention but if you are in a group that is literally asking for spirit possession and literally hurting people then your intention is evil so again i just want everybody to really consider that it does come down to intention i also would again as always highly suggest that you do your own research into this especially if you're coming from the christian church this was the cult that infiltrated at the council of nicaea with mithraism which was what constantine practiced the great constantine pratt was a mithraic practitioner and along with the cult of dionysus they formed the roman catholic church which then became the protestant churches again christianity ain't nothing but satanism with a bow on it and that my friends comes from my own research i really 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 encourage you to continue to do your research as i've said before this cult it's it's um it's it's power the, the reason why it hasn't totally been taken out yet is because it still has its claws in people through religion, through Christianity. And it cracks me up because so many people are like awake and aware of like everything else. But for some reason, they think the church is good and they keep quoting the Bible. And I'm like, y'all, that's a satanic book. The real Bible is under the Vatican. You've never seen it. They're not going to let anybody see that. Thank God for the few missing books, the Bibles that we do have, because now we're able to see the huge difference between the canonized Bible, which is that of the cult of Dionysus and Mithraism, and the missing books, which is the real teachings of Yahshua and Magdalene. So I would really encourage each of you to just question your own beliefs, question the church. People will often say, well, you know, the prophecies of the Bible are coming true. Well, isn't that handy? Because the people who wrote the Bible are also the ones that are puppeting the events of our world. So isn't that interesting? No wonder the Bible's prophecies are coming true because it's the playbook that they're doing, right? 
So really, really question this stuff, you guys. Really research. It's it's it blows my mind. And I know that I'm preaching to the choir right now. I know you guys are really sovereign, independent people. But you know, we see in this community a lot of, of these truth seekers, people who are seeking the truth. We are so aware of the lies that are being told to us through mainstream media. We're aware of that. We know that. I think everyone knows that at this point. But people are replacing mainstream media with youtube telegram and rumble they're still not doing their research so they went from watching anderson cooper and megan kelly and all these big news anchors and they switched them for a talking head on youtube and they're just taking what these people on youtube say is fact just like other people are taking what the people on the media say is fact if you're not doing your own research then you haven't awakened at all you're still just a sheep. And so this is why it's so important. I know that might sound harsh, but the truth that's the truth. You know, feelings are not facts. Emotions are not facts. Facts are facts. And that is why it is so important to do your own research. Please, please, please research this so that you have an integral understanding of the mind fuck that has happened to all of us. And beyond all of this, I know that it can be very scary when the religion or the faith that you've grown up with, you now understand to be compromised. I know that that can be very scary, but I am here to tell you that on the other side of that fear is peace. And there is a God. There is very much a source creator God. And that source creator God, the real God, would never ask you to do anything like a sacrifice. That real God would never send you into the pits of, of hell because you didn't believe something properly. There's no blackmail. There's no coercion. None of that exists with the real God. And I'm here to tell you, you who is watching this right now, that you are more precious than anything in this world. Your soul is precious. You are a light. You are a fractal of God. And you are loved more than you can even imagine. You were put on this earth for a reason. And if you were not here on this earth right now, you watching this right now, no matter how small you think your life is, no matter how insignificant you think your life is, if you were not here on this earth right now, this would all fall apart. That is how important you are. We know from the law of one that every soul that walks the earth right now was appointed to be here at this time. There are no new souls on the earth at this time. All the souls that are here are old souls. Why? Because the old souls can handle this. It's a tough battle we're in, but we can handle it. So you watching right now, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how much you feel like the odds are stacked against you, I want you to know that you matter. And there, you, you have the love of God. There's nothing you have to do to gain that love. You are, you just, you are that love. You are that. Okay. No pastor, no preacher, no spouse, no friend. There's no one that can dictate what God means to you. And people who use God as a weapon, be very careful of those people. In the positive side of this, the side of light, there's no elitism. There's no pecking order. There's no royalty. There's no, oh, these people matter and those people don't. No, my friends. On the positive side of things, we all equally matter. We are all fractals of God. And I really want you watching to understand that. Please, please, please understand how special and precious and magnificent you are. The same God who created the Rocky Mountains also created you. You are powerful. You are special. And I thank you for being here on this earth right now. Please do not let anybody, especially some piece of shit that comes from this Dionysian cult, convince you otherwise.
So do not forget to join us over on Aquarius Rising Africa at 10 o'clock this morning as we do a live feed and live discussion over the cult of Dionysus. Um, Shanti is also going to be researching this. Usually it's me that does the research and presents the information. But after last week, we decided that Shanti is also, also going to be doing a little bit of research so that we can compare notes and really have a thorough conversation about these practices. So make sure to join us because you are a very integral part of that conversation as well. With that being said, have a wonderful day. Be nice to each other. Be in kindness. Be fair. Be compassionate. Be empathetic. Be the opposite of the Dionysian cult. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.